Welcome to this second part of where will the Nandi vote go? Okay, and let's dive into it right away. Now, one of the chief things that will help us to understand the Nandi community very well, so that we will have an informed view of where their vote might go in 2017, vis-a-vis -vis in regards to the presidential race, is the fact that the Nandi was a single community responsible for dealing with the British. Let me just put it in our, in our, in our everyday language. Yeah? The British, while building the railway in the, 18th century, in the 19th century, had no problem coming up from Mombasa. They passed even through the fierce Maasai. They had no problem dealing with the fierce Maasai. But when they reached Nandi country, <laughs> they had issues. And the issues were so serious that it took the British not one month, not 11 months, not two years to deal with the Nandi. It took them 11 long years of resistance from the Nandi daily, 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 daily to finally be able to uh, defeat the Nandi and allow the railway to be able to be used peacefully and allow the railway to go on. It took them 11 years. Yeah. Now the story behind that is a name you might have heard so many other times and is the name of one of uh, the leaders, legends in the Nandi tribe. They consider one of the greatest leaders, a uh, military genius par excellence, a man called Koitalel Arab Samoy. Now, please don't get bored. I know most of you hate uh, history lessons, but I'm just giving you a few facts. I'm going very fast, so just bear with me. Now, Koitalel Arab Samoy is very interesting because uh, his father was killed, murdered by the Nandi. He was actually stoned to death. And the reason why he was stoned to death the wise Nandi, the crafty Nandi elders claimed that he had uh, created a spell which had interfered with the rain. That was the official story. But the real story, the reason why he was murdered, was that he had predicted correctly that the Nandi were going to be subdued by a tribe, yeah, white men coming in a snake, something like that. Yeah? He made a prophecy, he made a prediction that the Nandi would be subdued. And this prophecy so angered the Nandi, they didn't want to hear it. It angered them so much that they plotted on how to kill their own leader. Okay? And uh, they succeeded, they actually stoned him to death. But before he died, he called his sons. And one of those sons was uh, Koitalel Arab Samoy. And he made his sons swear to him that they would never accept any leadership position amongst the Nandi. But I guess when leadership and destiny is in your blood, nothing can stop it. Yeah? That did not stop Koitalel Arab Samoy from rising up into the leadership of the Nandi. Now, when the British came along and uh, the really land reached, reached Nandi country, they had serious problems. But this time, the Nandi was a dominant uh, tribe in the area. There were not very many. They had small numbers, but their military brilliance enabled them to dominate over much, much larger tribes, including the very fierce Wasingishu Masai. Yeah? who the Nandi had no problem dealing with. Their military tactics were just uh, crazy. Because you can imagine you're holding a gun, you're in the British, you're a British soldier, you have a gun that can kill very many natives, as they used to call them, yeah? And you're somewhere waiting for these natives to appear, then the attack is so sudden, and you have arrows flying in from all directions, you can't even see where they are some of them are flying in from. What do you do with your gun? It becomes completely useless. And this is what they did, they killed a lot of Brits, and they were able to completely defeat the British. Now the Nandi were also crafty because normally the British used to use a very effective uh, tactic in dealing with the locals when they wanted to subdue them. All they did was they walked into their village, they just burned all their crops and that was it. The guys would not fight for long without food, huh? so very soon they would surrender. Now one of the big puzzles which the Brits were never able to solve was how the Nandi survived. Yeah. Because they, they had no crops, they had, everything of theirs had already been destroyed by the British, but they kept the fight for 11 years. Okay? How did they do it? Very simple. They made a pact to the neighboring Kipsigis. Yeah? They made a pact to the neighboring, neighboring Kipsigis, and then they took their herds, their large herds of cows and goats and whatever, and they mixed them with the Kipsigis ones. Yeah? So when the Brits came up, they had no problem with the Kipsigis, therefore they didn't touch any Kipsigis property, they wanted the Nandi people. Yeah? But little did they know that within the Kipsigis herd was the Nandi herd, which was keeping the Nandi going for 11 long years. <laughs> Very crafty, don't you think? 
Of course, the person responsible for a lot of uh, these victories was their leader, Kotalel Arab Samoy, military genius. And it did not take long for the British to realize that uh, if they dealt with the leader, at least they would have a chance of defeating the, the Nandi. But with the leader still around, it was unlikely, even with their guns, their cannons, their superior weapons, that they would ever defeat the Nandi. Now, in the next uh, episode in this series, we'll find out the dirty tricks the Brits used to finally subdue the Nandi, very dirty tricks, which the British uh, get ashamed of. And the reason why the British hid this part of the history, yeah, from our history books, from general knowledge and so on, they hid it because they were very ashamed, because they did something extremely shameful in dealing with this problem. I'll see you there in a minute. As usual, you know the drill, just click on that link on the top left-hand corner, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. This is Chris Kumakucha.